I didn't know what to do for a best man speech. You know, I've been to plenty of weddings before where someone said a story or whatever, but when it came to me trying to figure out what I needed to do, uh, I was kind of lost. So I scanned on YouTube, I listened to podcasts, and I found some fairly decent advice. But uh, when it came to my brother getting married and me having to write a best man speech, I really had to dig deep and find out exactly how to make the best best man speech that I could possibly do. It's a once in a lifetime thing and um, or maybe some of you it's maybe a third time thing or a fourth time thing but no, regardless it's a very special thing to be uh, given or bestowed upon you is to become a best man and apart from taking care of the groom's needs and all of that being a best man is doing the speech at the uh, dinner afterwards, the reception. And some of you may be nervous. Some of you may not enjoy public speaking. I think all of us uh, get a little nervous, at least, with public speaking. I myself, I still do. Now, I do a podcast and I do YouTube videos and I talk all the time. But that's totally different as to because I'm in my room by myself talking. But when you're standing in a room full of faces that are recognizable, and some not, uh, and they're all staring at you, uh, it can be a little intimidating. So I'm going to give you tips on uh, public speaking. And also, even if you're, you're okay with public speaking, you're just like, oh, yeah, dude, I got that down. I don't need that. I'm good, man. I'm good. There's going to be other things that you may be lost at, uh, you know, trying to structure a good speech, all of that. I'm going to give you the complete best man speech, tutorial, tips, all of that. This is the only video you'll ever need to make a great best man speech. So let's get into this. I have 12 tips. Okay, tip number 12. So you're worried about public speaking. It's the biggest fear that most people have is speaking in front of a large group of people. Well, getting married, or a wedding in general, is a very joyous occasion, and if you mess up, or you screw something up real quick, or you read your lines wrong, or whatever, no one's going to be egging you off stage. They're actually going to be egging you on, saying, yeah, awesome, cool, you know, talking, because for the most part, I think... You as a best man, all of your friends are just so happy that they're not giving the speech. So they're just like, ugh, that's a load off my chest, but I'm going to root for the guy that actually has to do it. And, you know, they'll be supporting you. They're not looking at you with a critical eye. And more realistically, most of the people out there, they're going to be focused on the bride and the groom more than you talking. So... Uh, just with that knowledge, you're there to have a good time. You're there to celebrate uh, the marriage. And with that in mind, knowing that it's not like you're going into a business meeting and it's win or lose if you do a good speech or not. This is all just, uh, it's all win-win. So just with that going in, uh, I th it, it definitely helped me knowing that. And then also, uh, the DJ, when I gave a best man speech the light he had a stage light and it was like shining right in my eyes so with that it kind of blurred out all the people that i saw it was like blinding me <laughs> so uh sometimes that helps having a light just shined in your eyes so you could focus on uh you know what you're saying as opposed to everybody staring at you tip number 11 is if the groom chose you to be his best man and you really don't know him too well and maybe the groom didn't have any other friends and he just knew you through work or whatever and you don't know him too well uh, or any kind of stories don't be afraid to ask some close family members or whatever for some stories and just message him saying hey you know hey uh, I don't know much about because there's some kind of material I could talk about while I give this best man speech They'll be happy to tell you stories, so don't be afraid to do that. All right, so tip number 10 is to never, never bring up a groom's ex. Never bring up exes at this thing. Now, this may seem like a no-brainer, but 
even in a good light, somebody may have a harebrained idea of saying, you know, after all the people that you've been with in the past, I'm glad you chose the bride. She was the best pick out of all of them you've been with. Even that, as it's shown in a good light in some way, don't bring up anybody from the person's past who's getting married. They're looking forward. So yeah, don't, don't bring up exes at all. So tip number nine is a boring tip, but it's a very important tip is to structure your speech well. Just like any song or movie or TV show or book, have a beginning, a nice opening, have a middle, and then have an end. Make sure you wrap it up with a very nice bow at the end. So yeah, make sure you structure it out. Make sure it has a beginning, middle, and end. Tip number eight is uh, something you may think is the bride or groom's job, but they're probably just a bundle of nerves at the moment. And you are the best man. Your job is to almost be the spokesperson for the groom as he's just uh, taking care of uh, composing himself on the biggest day, one of the biggest days of his life. So what you want to do is thank the audience in your speech for coming and attending. Uh, bring up people that couldn't make it. You know, tell them thank you. They are here in spirit. You know, all that kind of stuff. Now, I told you in a previous tip that you need to structure your speech. I'm not going to leave you hanging like that. So that takes us to tip number seven, where when you open up the speech, you say, thanks for everybody for coming. You're going to want to uh, turn your attention to the bride and the bridesmaids. So what you'll want to say is something like, I just want to say how amazing the bride looks today and how the bridesmaids just made everything happen. The wedding went off without a hitch. Just everything went perfect and they just all look beautiful today. And that will make the audience erupt in a round of applause. So, you know, certain spots in your speech, you'll think that they won't uh, clap. The audience won't clap, but uh, they will clap. And parts that you thought people will clap won't. It's very weird how it works out. Big round of applause all around. Then we get to tip number six, which you will introduce yourself to the audience, the crowd. There's going to be people there that don't know who you are, and they'll want to know the relation between you and the groom. So like I said, hi, I'm DJ. I am Dean's brother. And then you could go on and talk about the ups and downs of the relationship that you're past with him. And this is when you could tell jokes and just little fun, funny things. Keep it very light at this part of the speech. Tip number five is this, you are the best man. So your job as the best man is to make this speech and this moment during the wedding, the marriage ceremony, the best that it can be. And this is when you could tell stories. Uh, you can be funny. You could be having a very heartwarming moment. But there, there's a fine line. You want to do like a 50-50. You don't want completely over dramatic kind of thing and be like, my brother was everything to me. And it's just so beautiful. <laughs> you don't want to do that. But you also don't want to turn the speech into a stand-up routine. You want, you want a fine line of mixing and blending uh, heartwarming moments, heartwarming stories along with the humor. I'd say that's the best route to go. And uh, just so everybody knows that this is a very, you know, uh, monumental moment instead of just, hey, here's another joke I, I had with them. <laughs> Keep the humor PG, maybe PG-13. You know, maybe mention that he farts a bit too much. Or something like that. You don't want to roast him. Oh, I'm getting sweaty. Tip number four is think of one big story that really stands out between you and the groom that, that you shared in your past. Something that makes him look good. Um, so, for example, when I did the speech for my brother, I talked about how one time we walked to a burger joint with two of our friends and we sat down and we ate our burgers 
And my brother just kind of stopped and he looked at us and he's he's kind of like trying to be sentimental. And he says, you know what, guys, one day we're going to look back on this. And we all looked at him and said, no, we're not. Shut up. But him saying that back in the day and it kind of became a run on joke throughout the years like we'd be doing just very mundane things and he'll stop and say you know what guys we're gonna look back on this and so i was thinking about that and i was like i'm gonna tell that story and wrapping up the story i told everybody that you know my brother brings that up and it, without him saying that, I would have totally forgot that moment. So he has a knack for really making us appreciate the small things in life because that's what really matters, spending time with others. <laughs> and so I wrapped it up by saying, so I want everybody around you to look around, look at each other, just soak this moment in. And I just want to say, you know what, guys? One day we're going to look back on this. <laughs> and that's how I wrapped it up. So think of some kind of story like that and have some kind of funny PG rated uh, punchline to it. Tip number three is we are not going to want to just tell stories about the past and stay in the past. At this point in your speech, you're gonna want to push towards the future. And before you even do the speech, while you're writing it, you're going to want to ask the bride, what kind of quirks, what little things that you could tease him about? And the bride will maybe bring up something like, he leaves his clothes everywhere on the floor, or he can wash up the sink after he's done shaving or whatever the the little nitpicky things that aren't really a big problem but it's just funny haha to bring up so when you talk about the future and you get into this spot you it's the time when you're gonna give the groom and bride some advice on how to have a uh, great uh, future together not necessarily the bride you're going to be given any advice to it's just the groom so what you want to say is all right i got some tips for you to make sure you have a very very happy future happy wife happy home <laughs> so here's some tips and then go through pick up your clothes make sure you clean up after you shave blah da 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 and this will make the audience you know have a little you know la laugh track it'll sound like you're in a sitcom and you said something, you said bazinga. And as these jokes are very lighthearted, you'll want to end it with something like, but the best advice I could give you is as long as you are who you are and as I know you to be, you're all gonna be great. You're all gonna be just fine. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Tip number two is you're gonna want to end the speech with a toast. It's such an obvious thing that it you may just get out of your mind, but make sure you have your glass ready. Make sure everybody else has their glasses ready. A toast to a very happy, wonderful, long-lasting, and fruitful marriage to Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so. Congratulations, guys. Congrat congratulations guys congratulations guys you want to say congratulations guys congratulations guys so tip number one is to practice 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 i cannot stress enough that you need to practice what you'll want to first do is write out your entire speech everything that you could think of and practice it say it out loud in front of the mirror Talk to a friend, do it over the phone, get somebody over so you could do it in front of them and see what they think. Uh, my experience is <laughs> when you practice the speech in front of somebody, just one person, the other person feels embarrassed. It's like, I'm the one doing the speech. <laughs> but regardless, do the speech. And as you actually say the words out loud, it's totally different than you writing it on a paper. It's totally different compared to you actually saying it. And if something comes out wrong that you don't feel is right, edit it out. So over 
time while you're practicing it and uh, speaking in front of the mirror, whatever you need to do, the, the things that don't need to be in it will naturally fall to the wayside. So you'll want to edit it down, make sure everything you're saying is uh, lean, cut out the fluff, because you want to make sure that the speech is five to eight minutes long, somewhere around there. You don't want to go too long and you don't want to go too short because what's the point of being a best man if you only have two to three minutes of stuff to talk about, you know? But you don't want to go too long to where people are like starving and they're ready to eat, you know? So make it a five to eight minute uh, zone of how long your speech is. So time it out. I think mine was right at about eight minutes, something like that. And everything will be great. You tell a nice, great story. You get a few laughs. You have some heartwarming moments. And possibly you give them a great best man speech. When I knew I was going to be a best man at the wedding, it was months from then, almost a year from then, but uh, I still wanted to make sure I had my speech down, so I started writing it very early on, and a month before the wedding, it was almost every day I did homework, like I got in front of the mirror and I did the speech at least once every day up until the wedding, and uh, three weeks before the wedding, it was like a steel trap, I started putting down the notes and I was able to recite it almost like word for word but I also kept it natural so you want to like you don't want to say word for word like have you have it written down you want to make sure that it's it's natural to you too and when I actually got up and I did the best man speech um, you know I was nervous so don't be afraid even when you have everything down pat you know exactly what you're going to say you will still be nervous but as soon as you get up there and you start talking after the first or second sentence of what you're saying, you're going to like go into, you know, like autopilot or something and be like, oh yeah, I know this material. I've practiced it before. I know exactly what to do, exactly what to say, all that. So yeah, practicing is the most important thing that you could do. This goes along with practice is don't be ashamed to bring a copy of your speech up with you sitting there on the table while you're doing it because that's what I did. Nobody cares if you uh, have paper out. It's not like, oh, he's cheating. <laughs> Nobody cares. And it was great too, because I started off, you know, without needing to read the lines. But at some point I did kind of like realize, uh, at this point, you know, did I do this line? And I'll just look down real quick and be like, oh yeah, we're right there. So I just, you know, read the first couple words and I'd be like, okay, that's what I need to say next. There is no shame in bringing a copy of your speech up there while you're doing it to help guide you through it. Also, a little bonus tip as well. If you happen to forget the speech that you have, keep an extra copy. I had two copies of my speech and I kept an extra copy inside of the jacket pocket on the inside jacket pocket of my suit. Luckily, I didn't need it. It's always good to have an extra copy of your speech on you, on hand, at all times, just in case you may ride the party bus somewhere else and you lose your speech from here to there you go oh, oh okay i got that copy all right that's cool so there a little bonus tip for you keep an extra backup copy on hand that is your 12 tips on how to make a great best man speech i hope this helps you if you have any other questions don't be afraid to ask me and leave a comment below and i will get back to you and hopefully help you but Definitely follow these tips and have fun out there. Have fun doing your speech. I know you could do it. And uh, with that being said, a toast to you, future person doing a best man speech. Congratulations on being a best man. Congrats. Congratulations. <laughs>